Ark Survival Ascended continues to deliver daily headlines. Call them highlights or lowlights, your choice. And I held off on posting anything yesterday as I felt deep down that more was to come, and I was right. Welcome back to the channel. It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and today we need to break down the latest in Ark news. And of course, I have some thoughts on it all, from the latest Xbox delay announcement to some wild speculation flying around the community. We also need to circle back around to that November 30th release date and take a good long look at the Xbox release window in general, plus the Big Snail Games Ark Survival Ascended sales numbers made headlines, but I've been doing some digging and have questions. Thanks again for all your continued support for my ARC News uploads. In case you haven't done so already, please smash that sub button and ring the notifications bell to receive my latest upload alerts. Likes, comments, shares are greatly appreciated. Chapters are in place for this one. And here we go. How could we lead off with any other story than the building anticipation and crushing letdown of yet another last minute delay announcement for Ark Survival Ascended on Xbox and Windows? Now, of course, back in October when ASA launched onto Steam for PC, it took a bit of speculating and waiting before the proposed release dates of November the 14th for Xbox and late, which by the way is not a date, but late November for PlayStation was given. The 14th has now come and gone as there was a last minute delay from that date posted in the ARC Discord citing Xbox certification issues and stating it should release later this week. All throughout yesterday, players were bombarding the Discord server with questions of when, with no answers given, until late yesterday evening with this statement and response from Studio Wildcard. Xbox. Unfortunately, the certification process has yielded some unexpected issues, so we are working with Microsoft to resubmit the build as soon as possible. We're currently targeting Ark Survival Ascended to launch early next week. By the way, bad idea to make that assumption. More on that in a moment. And we hope to share a more precise update by the end of the week. We apologize for the added delay. We're working hard to get it out the door. PlayStation, we are directly iterating with our partners and Sony on the ASA release and are still on track for launch at the end of the month. Again, bad idea to put this in here. We'll update you as we make more meaningful progress and have a precise launch window to share. We know you've been looking forward to ASA and we're sorry to keep our console survivors waiting. Now, I don't always have time to watch YouTube, but I'm sure you've already heard this announcement read verbatim from the other mainline ARC channels, but it was important for context. And we might as well start off with Studio Wildcard and delays, which are not the exception, but the norm with this group. I'm still trying to figure out how ARC Ascended was so prominently displayed in the Xbox Partner Preview nearly a month ago, but the latest ARC experience hasn't sniffed a firm launch date yet on Xbox. Instead, going into early access on Steam to satisfy the Nitrado repayment agreement and to use that platform to test the live version of the game, which continues to be a mixed bag. What so many players and fans of this franchise find dumbfounding is how Wildcard continues to stumble into the same social pitfalls week after week. I mean, at this point, the don't worry, it will launch next week, promises and promises announcements have done nothing to instill confidence in the ARC player base. Wildcard is clearly struggling mightily with the console certifications on both platforms, and next week, end of the month, just a little bit more is not cutting it. If I could give the comms team any bit of advice, it would be to just put out an honest statement, own up to the certification issues, explain in detail what the problems are, and stop with the dates and promises of just a little bit more because each time they do this and they miss them, it just gets added to the pile of evidence against Wildcard and their ability to meet any sort of deadline. Which brings us to next week and taking a look at the calendar, there is a very tight window to try to get Arc Ascended launched onto Xbox and Windows because of Thanksgiving. Now, Tuesday and Wednesday are typically shopping and or travel days. Thursday is Thanksgiving here in the U.S., so no work. 
Friday is Black Friday, which is a huge early shopping day, and most people after taking off Thursday will take off Friday as well. And then you're into the weekend. So either Ark Survival Ascended launches completely on Monday or Tuesday with a very slim chance on Wednesday. And if it doesn't, expect another delay announcement, ill-advised as it is, to the week after. Bringing us back to that Microsoft Store date of November the 30th and the question of, was that really just a placeholder? Because if ASA does not launch next week, what was considered wild speculation, no way in hell will it be delayed that far out will indeed play out as true. And then you could potentially run into a double console launch, assuming PlayStation also makes it in before the end of November. Again, this is wild card we're talking about. Could you imagine that train wreck scenario? Launching Xbox, X, and S, Windows, and PlayStation all within days of each other. But with each passing day, each delay announcement, each, hey guys, just a few more days promise statement, that nightmare launch scenario pushes ever closer. There's also been a statement, much like this one I'm about to read, flying around the ARC Discord, and it goes something like this. Hey, I work at Microsoft, or hey, my friend works in the certification department, and they're telling me that the game won't run on Series S, can't handle split screen, underpowered GPUs, etc., etc. You know, it kind of alternates around from there. And anyway, they're telling me it won't be ready to launch until early to mid-2024. Which, if you've been paying attention to Larian Studios and their recent public issues with getting Baldur's Gate 3 functioning on Series S, is entirely plausible. Could it be issues with the limitations of the system? Throw into the mix heavy resources required and a badly unoptimized arc ascended? Yeah, those are all a big recipe for delays. It could also be one of a thousand other things as well, which takes us back to those previous statements made by Wildcard that they had taken steps to send pre-certification builds to Xbox, to PlayStation, to preemptively sort out issues in order to avoid delays, which on face value, those efforts clearly did nothing to remedy the certification issues if they were ever sent in the first place. Anyways, that's enough on the recent Xbox delay. Let's switch over to Snail Games because they made some serious headlines earlier this week when they released their quarter three 2023 financial results with tons of figures I won't break down for you right now because this is the financial quarter prior to Arc Ascended releasing. And, you know, we expected that Snail lost money, which by the way, they did, netting a $4.4 million loss. More about this in a moment. Because the attention grabbing statement, which I saw plastered all over Twitter, was made by Jim Sai, CEO of Snail Games. Quote, in a short time, we have witnessed an overwhelming level of engagement from our growing global player base. In the first 24 hours, we sold 336,000 units, greatly surpassing our initial expectations. To date, we have sold more than 600,000 units. And there was also a follow-up edition of Ark Survival Ascended has seen an average DAU of 221,000. And the units sold over the first five days of launch exceeded expectations by 1.6 times what Snail believed they would see. And on initial face value, yeah, it sounds like Ark Survival Ascended sold like gangbusters. But something just didn't ring true to me. You know, comparing the concurrent player counts, which for Arc Ascended frequently fall below 50,000 players worldwide versus those 600,000 plus copies sold, it didn't feel right to me. And of course, this 600,000 headline does not factor in how many players purchased the game on Steam and then refunded out for various reasons. It just focuses in on initial copies sold. And so... I started digging around within the financial statement, and I found some interesting secondary clues, which we will eventually see if my theories were correct when the quarter four financials release in three or four months time. But anyways, here they are. So if Arc Ascended truly sold 600,000 copies, and since the game is regionally priced, let's call it an average of $30 a copy. And I know it went up slightly in price after the intro sales period, but for right now, let's go with 30 bucks. And assuming that none of those 600,000 copies refunded out, 
that equals $18 million in sales. Steam gets 30% off the top. Or if they have a great partnership with the platform, Snail and or Wildcard could get that down to 20%. So we're going to call it $5.4 million down to $3.6 million to Steam, leaving roughly $12.6 to $14.4 million in gross proceeds. Now, I don't want to break down all the necessary costs from there. You've got Epic Store engine licensing fees since it hasn't yet released on that platform, etc., etc. You've got Snail still paying large amounts to previous lenders, which by the way, show up as 6.75 million on their quarter three results, but still 12 to 14 million would not be a bad first week of sales. Snail is finally generating large amounts of revenue from ARC, or is it? And as I said, buried in their latest financials are some pretty large debts that of course they didn't lead off their quarter three presentation with. For instance, Snail has a $6 million revolving loan payment that is due in full on December the 31st. They also have a short-term note balance of 2.1 million that they are making payments on, but it's due in full by January 2024. Also in February 2024, Snail has to start making payments on a $1 million convertible note at the rate of 7.5% interest. And stated here in the financials, they actually say, if we're unable to extend the revolving loan or renew the debt arrangement, the company may have significantly reduced unrestricted and restricted cash, which could adversely impact our results of operations and ability to invest in the development and acquisition of IP. And so, after I read all this, it started to make more sense to me because I listened to the subsequent audio version of the financials with a Q&A session, and one of the few questions asked of Snail was where the Nitrato $4 million loan payment was currently sitting. Remember that if ARC Ascended launched by October the 31st, Snail had to repay the loan interest-free at the rate of 20% off of Ascended's proceeds until it was paid in full. Now, I don't know exactly what that figure they are using to calculate the 20% off. Is it gross? Is it net? But based on those 600,000 sales and the going rate of the game, you'd think that Snail would have the means to pay it all back, all four million in one lump sum. Anyways, the response from Snail to this investor question was that it has not yet been repaid to Nitrato and that they were on a payment plan. For me, this was the first pseudo red flag because if they truly sold 600,000 copies of Arc Ascended, again, we don't know how accurate that figure is. How many refunds were there? Does that include free copies? But anyways, assuming they did sell that many and made 13, 14, possibly $15 million in revenue minus 20%, that's roughly, what, 2.6 to 3 million they could make the Nitrato on the very first payment. Why not just spring for the extra $1 million and get that debt settled in full? Why do they need this payment plan? And furthermore, why did it feel like an excessive amount of time on this investor's call before someone from Snail decided to step up to the mic and answer this investor question? Which brings us to this Form 10Q that Snail Games filed with the SEC the day prior to their quarter three financial call. And again, I haven't seen this one covered on social media either. And it paints an even more damning picture of Snail's financial situation. So again, the TLDR here is found buried deep in this filing. Here it is, it's easy to understand. Here are the financials of Snail Games. The company incurred a net loss of 11.5 million and negative cash flows of 13.2 million for the nine months ending September 30th, 2023. As of September 30th, 2023, the company had cash and cash equivalents of 4.9 million, restricted cash and cash equivalents of 1.1 million, and listen to this, and current debt of 13.7 million dollars. Furthermore, Snail has just approved another $5 million convertible note financing resolution at a rate of 7.5% interest. Okay, so math time over. What does this all mean for ARC and how does it translate to the everyday player? Well, Snail is clearly leveraged to the brim with loans and interest that is coming due and coming due rapidly. And they need to generate huge levels of income just to try to get back to even. 
And here's where some speculation begins on my part, but by throwing out that what could be entirely misleading statement of just how well Ark Ascended has sold, Snail is attempting to generate buzz surrounding the company. Now, this should translate into more action for their stock, which I can confirm it did see yesterday, less than 24 hours after their quarterly call. Their stock was a wild roller coaster of huge gains and huge crashes over and over again. And there was trading on a scale I haven't seen with Snail Games since I've been covering this company. Now, once again, this could all be wrong on my part. I am speculating here and it will all have to be laid bare once the quarter four financials are released in three to four months time. They have to tell the truth in those SEC filings. And I guess we'll have to see how close I came to the truth in a few months time. That's going to wrap it up for today. Sound off in the comments section below about anything ARC related. Remember to hit subscribe and ring the notifications bell to receive my latest upload alerts. Likes, comments, shares are greatly appreciated. All my socials can be found in the video description. Shout out to the now over 180,000 of you that have found my channel and hit subscribe. Thank you so much for your continued support. And of course, a special thanks goes out to my Patreon supporters and to those much appreciated YouTube Super Chat donations. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.